y'all and welcome to today's video. We are going to be doing the new makeup releases tag video. I have a list of questions here in front of me all about makeup releases, kind of reflecting back on the releases that came this year, the releases that were good, bad, and we're going to talk about what I think will happen in 2023. And it's gonna be fun. This tag video was done by my friends, Angelica Neekvist and Samantha March. I will have them tagged down below. So definitely go and check out their channels because they came up with some fun questions. I always love hearing their answers. I have been doing this video for the past few years and I think it's just really fun. And my friend Karen Harris and I are collabing together on this video. I was talking to her uh, before I was sitting down to film actually and I was like, oh, I'm gonna do this, you know, and we were kind of talking about things and I was like, let's, let's do this video together. So I, I'm excited. We're gonna talk all about new makeup releases and if you are new here, I wanna say, hey, my name is Heather and makeup makes me happy. Here at my channel, we don't try to be perfect. We just wanna have a good time with our makeup, whatever that means. I am uploading lots of videos always, so please do subscribe before you leave today. I'm very excited about these questions though. As we go along, I would love to hear your answers to these questions too. So let's jump into it. So getting started, I did say this is a collab with my beautiful friend, Karen Harris. Definitely go check her out. I'm sure most of y'all are already subscribed to Karen, but she's just such an awesome person. She is such a great friend to me. She has dry skin. She lives in a totally different climate from me. So if you, you know, want to follow somebody who has a lot of different like skin type preferences and things like that than I do, you're really going to want to check out Karen. And I think, you know, as I was looking over these questions, I'm like, we're going to have vastly different answers. So there's nine questions. I have them pulled up here on my phone so I can kind of go through these. But question number one says, what mainstream release lived up to the hype most this year? And I will say for most of these questions, I tried to kind of narrow down my answers and not say too many things. So, you know, I was like, okay, I need to keep my answers short and concise, but I do have two things that I wanted to talk about as far as mainstream releases go. The first one being the cream bronzer from Charlotte Tilbury, because Charlotte Tilbury makes such great complexion products, in my opinion. I really, really like the stuff that she puts out. And her powder bronzer was a favorite for me. I really enjoyed it. I found it to be pigmented without being overly pigmented, very easy to blend. I could put on a little, I could put on a lot, and I was always able to get a really nice look with it. I just, I never have any issues with that bronzer. I hit pan in that bronzer, and I feel like we were all kind of waiting for a cream version. I do love her contour wands, but I just felt like a cream bronzer kind of had to be on the horizons for her. So she released her Beautiful Skin Sun Kissed Glow Bronzer, a uh, smoothing, healthy looking glow cream bronzer for face and body. And I really like that she put this bronzer in such a large pan because it's gonna take me a while to get through this. So although I did pr pay a big price tag, I love that we have this big pan. So if you wanted to bronze up your body, your shoulders, anything like that, you could definitely use a larger brush here. I really just keep this to the face, but it's so, so good. It's never hard to blend. It's never patchy. I never have any issues with it. But the other product I thought about are the a Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips, and I actually have all three of the formulas. So I have the Maracuja Juicy Lip Cream. That's actually what I have on today in, uh, what do we have, Iris? And then we have the Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump. So this one's way more glossy. My personal favorite is the Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump. Sorry, this one is the Juicy Lip, and this is the Juicy Lip 
plump in the gold packaging. I have several shades in all of those formulas. I think they're so good. It was such an amazing release from Tarte and I feel like it had a lot of people looking at Tarte with kind of fresh eyes because Tarte had had gone a lot of uh, like a little stale. I think it's especially like here on social media and stuff. They were just putting out a lot of products that maybe weren't innovative for a while. And then these really grabbed my attention. They're so nice. They're so creamy. They feel so nourishing on the lips. And I really love those. Okay, the next question is what indie release lived up to the hype most this year? And I really have to say, Unearthly Cosmetics killed it when it came to Halloween this year. I think I was really looking forward to what Unearthly would do for Halloween. And they had so many different things. They had mystery boxes, they had multiple palettes, they had magnetic palettes. But the one that really, of course, stands out for me is Warms My Blood. I think this was such a good Halloween release. I mean, of course, this is perfect for any time of year. And I'm so happy they've said that they will bring this palette back. It's not in stock right now, but I do believe they have plans to bring it back and this they just killed it the formulas in here are beautiful the mattes the shimmers the multi-chromes the metallics the flaky shades everything and yeah I was just I was really curious what unearthly was gonna do what were they gonna do for holiday what were they gonna do for Halloween and they exceeded all of my expectations Okay, so the next question follows that and it says, which release did not live up to the hype? So I'm going to, I, I don't know that I have a very popular opinion on this one, but I have to say Melt's Holiday Collection, I had this so hyped up in my mind. And let me just say, they released the mini Bad Side Zodiac palette. So we have Air, uh, earth, water, fire, we have the four elements, right? So those palettes are good. Like I think they're good palettes. They're really nice. I think the packaging is nice, but Melt Holiday is normally over the top. And while I don't think they had to do anything that was like this huge full collection like they've done in the past, I feel like when I look back on Melt holiday releases you know last year we had amori mariposas and we had this beautiful collection that was so special and i remember watching videos from the brand about the meaning behind the collection and all these things and it was just it was a big collection it was very expensive so i'm sure it did not sell maybe as well as they had hoped so maybe that's why they went smaller this year i totally understand that but then the year before that, we had the Beetlejuice collection and we had this over the top crazy packaging and theming and fun. And even if you didn't get the whole collection, like there were pieces that people who wanted to be a part of the Melt Holiday release and the Beetlejuice collab could get. I remember before that there was a um, Morte palette and uh, I forget what they, called, oh, Vita and Muerte, of course, like, what am I thinking? But it was just, that was a small collection, but it was very well thought out. It was very well done. And with the mini bad Zodiac or whatever they call it, I did not even know it was the holiday release. I honestly bought it thinking it was just a melt launch. And I was talking to my friends and they were like, oh, you know, I can't believe that's their holiday release. And I was like, no, I don't think this is the holiday release. Surely we're going to see something else, but we never did. And I just, it was a letdown. Like I said, it doesn't have to be a big collection. Vita and Muerte, they were two palettes. I think there was a highlighter with that collection. I can't remember everything, but just to have these four mini palettes launch, I think they had some liquid lipsticks and I don't, I wasn't interested in anything else, but I don't know. It's just, it kind of felt like a letdown to me. And I know that's an unpopular opinion, but that's mine. Number four says, what was the biggest curveball? And I pulled some things here in front of me, but for me, 
The biggest curveball was Bella Beauty Bar, the brand, because I have never tried the brand. I don't know that I had ever really heard of this brand before this year. And I noticed them because they were collabing with M. Jones on the Celestial Garden palette. And I followed M. Jones on Instagram for a long time. She's M. Jones5018. Uh, and I was like, ooh, that is really pretty. So yeah, uh, it, it was a curveball for me because I, I didn't expect to fall in love with this brand. And the M. Jones palette is amazing. And they also collabed with Lexi LALA Makeup on the CEO of the Rainbow palette. I love the mattes. I love the multi-chromes in here. Really, really, truly beautiful. But this palette was at the top of my ranking, like in the top 10. I won't spoil it if you haven't seen me rank all my palettes, but their Strange and Unusual palette knocked it out of the park for me. This was one of my favorite palettes that launched this whole year. And for me, this was a curveball because I just didn't even see this brand coming. And they put out this palette with spectacular mattes, spectacular multi-chromes, very sparkly shades. I have an all shimmer palette from them, Angles of Illumination. I enjoy that so much. Their Oracle Chrome Highlighter palette, love. I just, I didn't expect to fall this much in love or fall this hard for a brand like out of nowhere. And now everything they release, I'm like, give me, give me, give me, give me. I want to buy it all. Okay, number five is what was the biggest letdown or snooze fest this year? Now remember, we can share our unpopular opinions here without insulting one another. But for me, it was the Huda Beauty Holiday Palette. I have been wanting to try Huda Beauty shadows for so long because I had tried her nine pans in her neon palettes. My friend Karen was actually like, here, you can try these. And I don't think they were terrible. Like they were fine, but they were just fine. But everybody told me, you know, wait till holiday when she puts out her big palettes, like that is her best formula. That is the Huda people love. So I paid the money for this palette. This was a pricey palette. And I just, to me, I don't get the hype. Like, yes, it's a good palette. It's good, but it's not great. To me, it was not worth the price at all. And I mean, I don't know. Even if it was half the price, I still don't know that I would want to buy it because I don't want to reach for this palette. I am glad that as somebody who reviews makeup that I did get to try this. Now I will know kind of like a reference point when people talk about who does shadows, the people that love her. And I know I am in the minority when I say I don't love this palette because so many people do. There's so much static in the air, y'all. I'm so sorry that I keep like pulling on my hair. I know that can be annoying to some of y'all, but there's it's there's just so much static in the air. I, I can't help it. I can't just let the hair stick to my face, but this palette is good, not amazing. And I just, I, I guess I had heard so many good things about the palette. So many people loving the brand for so long that I had built up so much hype in my head that it was a let down. But I also want to say if, if Huda is your favorite shadows, that is wonderful. I'm very happy for you because that means you spent your makeup on something that you like. Number six says, what was the unsung hero of 2022? I have to give it to the Kaleidos Night of Creation liners. I will pop a picture up on the screen because I forget the exact name. I'll link them down below along with all the other things I talk about, but I did not expect to love these so much. I will be completely honest. Whenever I heard people talk about multi-chrome liners, I was always like, oh, that's really cool. But it was never, it was never like something that I felt super passionately about. Let's put it that way. And then the Kaleidos liners came and they're a multi-chrome liner that actually stay on my waterline for 12 plus hours. I can put them on when I'm ready to do my makeup, to film whatever at six in the morning. And then when I'm taking my makeup off at nine, 10 or later at night, they're still there and they're not drying. That's the other thing is sometimes when you get a liner that is 
you know, it's supposed to be a special color, it's supposed to last a long time. They're so dry that you can't really get them to apply. And these are the perfect balance between being creamy and not being so creamy that they slip and slide everywhere. You can use these on other parts of your face, you know, your upper lid, not just the waterline. I just prefer to use them in my waterline. That's more like how I use my makeup, but I have used them above before and they last beautifully there too. It was, it was a release I was not expecting in a product I was not expecting to love so much. Number seven says, what was the best holiday release this year? And I really, really have to give it to Odin's Eye. They killed it when it came to holiday. And I tried to think of like all of the holidays because there were definitely some really good releases this year, but I cannot get over these. I cannot get over these palettes. I think it was so smart for Odin's Eye to do this like over the top Christmassy theme. I would love to see more brands do that. Just completely embrace whatever holiday they want to do. I like I'm here for it, whatever holiday. And then the Christmas Eve palette, so beautiful too. It was I mean, they just knocked it out of the park to come out with two palettes. And this is kind of what I was talking about with Melt is your holiday release, it doesn't have to be a huge collection. You know, Odin's Eye did two holiday palettes and they were amazing palettes. It's not permanent to the line. You know, they released these. I know they sold out pretty quickly. I think within a few hours or a day. And then they allowed people to pre-order them. I think they kept the pre-order open for a couple of weeks. So, Odin's I did what I kind of wish Melt would have done. I understand if you want to keep the collection small, but just just really, really go for it. That's what I expected with Melt. And I felt like with Odin's I, they really went for it with their holiday release this year. And I love. Okay, number eight says, what was the best collab of 2022? Of course, I'm going to say my palette. I love my palette. I worked for so long with Adept perfecting my collab palette. You know, I'm not trying to just toot my own horn, but at the same time, like I created this. So of course it's my favorite. Of course, I think it's the best. Like I love it. It has everything I want. Deep dark mattes, grungy mattes, multi-chromes, shimmers, sparkle, shift, shine, everything I could want in a palette. I feel like I gave like fun, luxurious vibes with this palette. It's very me. And of course, I also have to talk about, you know, <laughs> like my bestie, <laughs> Aniela Ganigvis made the Odin's Eye Hella collab. I, you know, I don't want to say I'm biased, of course not, but I mean, we're best friends. So what, do, you know, like, what do, what do you want me to do? <laughs> But this is really so good. I love Odin's Eyes a brand so much. I see Angie's heart in this palette. I see her creativity. She did such a great job, not just with the color story, but with packaging and formulas, everything she did with this. Of course, my friend Karen Harris had a Sigma favorite set who I'm collabing with today. Check her out. Such a great curation of favorites. I got to collab with Sigma on a favorite set. I can't believe this is my life sometimes. Like I'm so thankful for the opportunities I get. And then, you know, I'm like, okay, outside of my friends, if people are like, Heather, don't talk about yourself. Don't talk about your friends. Don't talk about other creators. I think the best collab was the Glam Light Scooby-Doo collection. And I'm going to pop up a photo because I have everything in the collection. I actually bought the full collection and Glam Light sent it to me. So I was able to do a giveaway and I'm so happy that one of y'all won that lovely prize. And you know, I just... This was such a good collab. And for me, Scooby-Doo is very nostalgic. I love it. Even as a kid, I loved a good mystery. And the quality of that collection was so good. And I have to say, like, the price point was so amazing too. Because I'm pretty sure every item in the collection was $20 or under. And I love, love, love that. I love that Glamlight did that. I think the design of everything was amazing. The color schemes were amazing. The quality of the products were amazing. Again, Again, if you haven't watched my palette ranking video for the whole year, definitely go watch. Okay, number nine, what are your predictions for releases during the next year? So I've been kind of thinking about this and I have a few 
I have a few thoughts. I definitely think we're going to see more and more gimmicky products. We saw that this year some. And what, about, what I mean by gimmicky products is I think we're going to see a lot of products that are meant to go viral, like products that, that are meant to get like a reaction out of you. And sometimes products like that aren't always products that people are reaching for over and over and over again. They may not be products that wear well for a long time, but they're products that show well in a 10 second to one minute long video. You know, there's something that you can put on and you can be like, oh my gosh, look at this. This is the most full coverage concealer I've ever seen in my life. And everybody needs to go buy this. I think we're gonna see even more products like that to get that type of reaction out of creators and consumers. I had fun with this tag. I would love to hear your answers to these questions. We can always disagree about makeup as long as we are nice to one another. I can hate the makeup, but still like you. It's totally fine. Thank you so much for watching. Please do go check out Karen's channel. Also check out Angie and Sam. All of those people will be tagged in the description box. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day and I will see you very soon in another video. Bye.